the idea that the Denver Broncos somehow are only going to win five games next year seemed absolutely absurd when I first heard it, and it gets crazier by the day as we hear more and more news about how far the train had gotten off the tracks last year with Sean Payton and Russell Wilson. And while I try to let things go like I'm Elsa from uh, Frozen, the past is in the past, but the news that we got today is incredibly important to break down and just how big of a upside we have in Bo Nick. So uh, that is the news of the day. Let's dive right in. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ben. Break down all things Denver Broncos. I'm recording at halftime of the Nuggets game, so we'll keep this quick. Uh, so what we had today is we had a uh, sideline reporter for CBS come out and just talk to us about how crazy things had actually gotten in Denver. And we know that uh, with Nathaniel Hackett, remember Russell Wilson struggled so much with the play clock that uh, at Invesco Field at Mile High, folks were counting down the play clock. And a lot of that blame was going on Nathaniel Hackett, but he didn't have that problem in any other place he was at. And we're hearing news now that the reason with the play clock actually wasn't Hackett's fault. It was actually Russell Wilson's fault. Um, and that that was a big frustration that Sean Payton had also with Russell Wilson. Uh, and let's watch just a little snippet of this and we'll break down a couple more things and just what a huge juxtaposition Bo Nix is going to be to who Russell Wilson was. I think Arthur Smith is a way bigger addition than Russell Wilson is. Wow. There is a very, 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 very valid reason that Sean Payton, who is one of the best quarterback coaches and one of the best offensive minds in our game, who has had success not just with Drew Brees, but with James Winston, with Teddy Bridgewater, that Sean Payton is saying, I'm going to pay this guy millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to be nowhere near my life. So there's a very, 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 like you can't say very that many times. Um, again, we're talking about a sideline reporter who goes on. It's a 20-minute interview uh, on that Cleveland show, mostly breaking down the AFC North. But uh, she, you know, she has sideline access. She has pre-production meetings with Russell Wilson, with Sean Payton. And there's a very good reason that Sean Payton is one of the best coaches in football. Why would he pay Russell Wilson millions of dollars to move on? And so there was a couple things uh, that she points to in this. Uh, the first thing was that uh, at first, Russell Wilson had a hard time grasping a play that had so many intricacies to it. And so to kind of solve that problem, they gave him the wristband. Remember that famously early on and him talking about how he was above a wristband and didn't need it. And then by the end, they whittled down the play calls all the way down to just two word play calls and you know like every single ESPN mic'd up or you know they always have Peyton on and be like hey give us what a a fake play would be like and he's like well it's ZY X banana four four turbo Z whiskey right like they're really complicated play calls and Sean Payton's are insane and they had to whittle it down just to a two word play call and then everyone else on the field had to know what it is and then this, he was constantly climbing out of the back of the pocket. That's not what Sean Payton wants. Go back and watch any film of Drew Brees. He wants you hitting your back foot and throwing it to the dude who's open. And Russell Wilson just couldn't do that. Uh, and then uh, one of the crazy things that came in here, um, you know, it all just came to head at that Detroit Lions game when Sean Payton kind of chewed him out on the sideline. And truly, if this is the case, um, mad props to Sean Payton that none of this kind of stuff came out from Sean. Sean could have thrown him under the bus with any of these things, but he didn't. And so I love that this is coming out from an impartial third party just saying, hey, things had gotten pretty bad here, and Bo Nix is the opposite of that. Bo Nix is a coach's son. Bo Nix has been steeped in football his entire life. If you go and watch the Guts and Glory uh, new documentary on his life, you just see him throwing an awesome ball at like two years old and just being around the game and he gets it. He is such a cerebral player that he, if he doesn't have the athleticism of Russell Wilson, who cares? The ball is going to be where it needs to be. And that is a really, really exciting thing. Um, and then uh, I just love here that just reading, we're reading more and more people who like Bo Nix and the more and more people who are just gushing about Sean Payton, uh, even Dick Vermeil being, an, you know, one of the blue blood NFL guys coming out and saying to me, Andy Reid and Sean Payton are the offensive coaches of the decade. So imagine an offensive coach of the decade now having a quarterback who can run his system. I just do not understand how how people are saying we're only going to win five games next year, that Bo Nix isn't going to have the athleticism of Russ. He's not going to have the experience of Russ, but if he can run the system, we are going to at least win as many games as we did last year. And I, I totally believe that we're seeing um, the 
the lead analyst for Pro Football Focus come out and say he would be incredibly surprised if Troy Franklin didn't significantly outperform his draft slot. PFF had Franklin rated really, really high. Um, and then we see here that our guard, we have the third best guard in the entire league right now. And then we know we our offensive line, we have the one of the top 10 offensive lines in football. We have Javante coming back off of a catastrophic knee injury. We have Sean Payton believing that Greg Dulcich is going to be healthy or he would have gotten a tight end in this draft. And really, other than Lloyd Cushenberry, you can't look at this roster and say that we have regressed anywhere. If anything, we now are going to see Sean Payton get off of, you know, last year he said all that we installed last year was the guardrails on this offense. And now we're taking it to level two. And I just don't understand how we're going to get any worse. Curious what all of you think. And Broncos country, does this news, is it surprising to you would be my first question. And then does that have you crazy hyped for next year? Uh, Do you also find it ridiculous to think that this Broncos team only wins five games next year? Uh, We got schedule release coming up. Very excited about that. Uh, And Broncos country, I hope that you are staying locked in because playoffs, I think it's coming, and I think it's coming fast. So let's giddy up. Ooh, I hope that that's got to do something for the Nuggets. Like, come on, giddy up, boys.